In this video, we describe differential scanning calorimetry, which is the technique of choice to measure the enthalpy of denaturation of complex molecules like proteins, DNA, polymers, and so forth. All right, so uh, the idea here is that we want to understand how much energy does it take to get a native, native protein from the folded state to the unfolded state through thermal denaturation. And we know that that happens, right? So all proteins, uh, you put them in solution, and then elevate the temperature of that solution, and eventually they undergo a conform conformational change, which generally is connected to a loss of activity, right? So in vivo, uh, proteins have a folded active uh, structure, but again, if you thermally denature, they tend to lose that activity. So the question that we ask here in this video is, how do we measure the enthalpy uh, of that denaturation phase transition? All right, the, uh, the technique of choice is differential scanning calorimetry, and a very rough sketch of how that technique works is uh, right here. So the, the apparatus has two compartments, one in which you simply put a sample, uh, and your sample of protein or DNA or whatever it is, and then a reference. Now, uh, the, the sample is going to undergo uh, denaturation or phase change at some temperature, let's say 50 Celsius, or around that temperature. Now, what you have in the reference is a substance that has a known heat capacity, and it cannot have uh, any phase transition at around 50 Celsius, right? So a block of iron uh, or any metal uh, would actually be a really good uh, uh, reference for biological tissues that undergo denaturation at really low temperatures, whereas wild metals generally uh, require high temperatures to actually melt them. All right, so uh, here's how the, how the process works, right? So you start at some temperature, and let's say that we start at room temperature, and then what you do is you supply energy as heat to both the um, reference and the sample uh, such that the temperature of both compartments uh, gets elevated at the same rate, right? So the idea is that, well, you want this uh, sample to elevate its temperature maybe by one degree per minute, but then you also want that uh, reference, that block of metal, to elevate the temperature at the same rate. Now, you will have to deliver different amounts of heat, different rates of heat, right? Because the heat capacity of this metal is gonna be different. Uh, to the heat capacity of the protein solution, and that means that they change the temperature differently uh, for the same amount of energy transfer as heat. Okay, but that's not the point of the experiment. The, po the point of the experiment is that you're going to control how much heat, heat, heat goes to uh, either uh, sample uh, or either compartment so that the rate of increase in the temperature with time uh, is the same, so, so one degree per minute, for example. All right, great, so uh, then uh, you start the experiment and then it's 25 degrees and then it goes to 26 degrees in both compartments after one minute, and then 27, 28, and so forth. All right, so when you get to maybe 50 degrees, uh, what happens is that uh, the protein solution starts to denature. And the problem is this, right? Uh, notice that the uh, denaturation process, like any phase transition, is endothermic, so all of the energy that you're supplying to that uh, protein solution is not invested in elevating the temperature. Instead, some of that energy is actually invested in, in just changing the conformation and causing that physical change that we call denaturation, right? So, so the computer kind of uh, that, that controls this notices that it's saying, well, all right, I'm transferring energy as heat as, at the same rate as I was before. Well, however, the reference is actually increasing its temperature, but the sample is not. Okay, notice that here you have two coupled thermometers that tell you if, if uh, the temperature are keeping up or one of them is getting delayed. Right, so clearly here, the temperature is not increasing as much as there because the energy is being divested into unfolding the protein, right? So, so then what, what has to happen here is that uh, the computer that is noticing that needs to deliver an excess of energy as heat to this sample compartment so that the temperature stays the same, right? That's kind of uh, what the concept here is, right? So there's an excess uh, amount of heat that is transferred 
uh, once the uh, denaturation is starting to take place. Okay, and that can be coded as an excess heat capacity, right? That phase transition is making it such that you need to supply much more energy uh, than before to be able to elevate the temperature because there's an excess heat or excess heat capacity that again is connected to the energetic cost to denature that protein. Okay, so in the end, uh, what uh, the end of the uh, experiment looks like is like this. You're actually going to plot that excess heat capacity, right, uh, that is uh, intricately connected to this phase transition as a function of temperature. And the way that these graphs look like uh, is what we call a thermogram, right? So it actually looks like this, right? So before the denaturation, there's no excess heat capacity, but then as the uh, phase transition denaturation is taking place, you get a peak, and eventually you get uh, to a different value of the heat capacity that has to do with the fact that the final heat capacity of the unraveled or denatured protein is different from the heat capacity of the folded protein. Okay, so uh, you connect these two, you find a suitable baseline, and then uh, the enthalpy of the phase transition is connected to the area uh, under this curve, the area of this thermogram, and, and to actually see how we can draw from our uh, knowledge of uh, thermodynamics and the first law. But you notice that this is a process of constant pressure, okay, so this is open to the environment, or you can make it be uh, open to the environment if you want to, and that means that uh, these two things are going to be connected, right? So the heat that you're delivering is Q sub P, and that is directly uh, differential of H, okay? But of course, uh, notice that here we're changing the temperature, so that would be exactly the same thing as saying, well, this is your uh, heat capacity at constant pressure, differential of T, okay? And again, notice that the only heat that is invested in this phase transition is the one that we call excess, right? So uh, uh, you can say that then the differential of the enthalpy in the transition, which will be a denaturation in this case, is going to be equal to heat capacity, the excess one, the one that we have in the thermogram, differential of T, right? So to uh, be able to up, uh, calculate the actual value of the change in enthalpy for the denaturation, you just simply integrate Right, so that will be delta of the transition, H, is the integral of uh, C sub P axis, differential of T. Okay, from this uh, starting point to the final point, those will be the limits of the integral. Uh, but something that is cool about this is that if you get this thermogram, thermogram as a graphical representation, the only thing that you actually have to do is simply measure the area under this curve, right? Because what you're doing in this graph is you're representing that function, which is the integrand, as a function of the change in the variable, which is that one. And when you do that, it turns out that the integral is simply the area under the curve. That is the geometric definition of what an integral is, right? So in a differential scanning calorimetry, you can obtain the enthalpy of the inaturation of proteins or DNA or, or polymers by simply uh, taking the area of the thermogram, which is simply a representation of this excess heat capacity that we have defined in this video uh, as a function of temperature. Okay, so uh, this concludes this video about uh, the fundamentals of differential scanning calorimetry. And next, we're gonna move on to uh, try to understand how to think about the enthalpies of chemical reactions.